rebuilding a large Clarkson single-cylinder vertical steam engine part 2, steam unions and compressed air testing. The compressed air testing part of this is somewhat optimistic. The first thing to do is to remove the steam chest cover and to do this I have to remove all these nuts and lock nuts. Great fun. This took ages, I've shortened the sequence because it really was tedious. And finally, with the edge of a sharp knife, or not such a sharp knife in my case, I just lever off the steam chest cover to break the seal. But in this case there wasn't a seal, there is no gasket present, and this is looking more and more like the engines never run. I've scribed on a little arrow to tell me which is the top. It will save me time later when I put the engine back together. OK, then it's time to thread this hole in the steam chest cover. And I do this by first of all drilling it tapping size. I'm drilling it tapping size for half inch by 32 threads per inch. Once the hole was drilled tapping size for half inch by 32, and I did this in two <coughs> passes with two different size drills, I thread it while it's still in the machine. That way I know that the thread is precisely square to the main casting. And once I've got the thread well down into the casting, I remove the whole assembly from the machine and I do it by hand. It's just quicker, quicker and easier. Now it's time to make the brass fitting to fit into the hole in the steam chest. And what I'm doing here is turning a piece of brass down to half an inch outside diameter. When I get what I think to be as close to half an inch, I make a cut that may be under half an inch like you see here. I'm labouring this somewhat for the video because I'm very aware that a lot of beginners to machine tools look at this and think, hmm, that's interesting. Anyone who knows what I'm doing, just fast forward to the next bit. Yes, that's nearly there. One more fine cut, I think. And then, the micrometer fits on like this. Not a good idea, don't do this. Do not leave micrometers clamped to the work. Health and safety warning, protective equipment, etc. Gas mask all over biohazard suit. I'm aiming this next bit at people who do not have too much professional engineering equipment at hand. This is just an ordinary cheap and nasty die holder. You get these in sets and things. And with the help of the tailstock chuck to keep the die in position while it starts, I get quite a good thread on this piece. In this clip I'm using a centre drill to make the initial hole in the work. Then I'm using a drill, I think it's a 3 drill this, to just drill a hole through the middle to let the steam in. Don't forget to do this because if you just make the thing solid, it'll look quite nice, but no steam will be able to get into the steam chest. Always take your time when drilling with the tailstock chuck. Clear the chips frequently by withdrawing the drill. With the hole safely drilled down the middle of the piece, it's time now to work on the outside diameter. I'm reducing this bar to approximately 5 eighths of an inch. With the lathe on auto feed, I'm turning down the bar to 5 eighths of an inch diameter for approximately an inch and a half of its length. But now, because I have a musician's brain and not an engineer's brain, I've broken off turning down the 5 eighths part, and I'm just making a small recess at the end of the thread, so it fits perfectly up against the steam chest cover. And then, it's back to turning the piece to approximately 5 eighths of an inch diameter for a distance of approximately 1.5 inches all the way down the piece of brass. I unfortunately do it this way, it's not the right way I know, and when I turn locomotive wheels, if I have six to do, then I really have to study, and I have to think about it, and try not to get distracted. My father used to call me grasshopper when I was young, not because he used to leap about in the garden and eat his cabbages, it was just because I used to jump from thing to thing. First of all I'd be doing one thing and then I'd be on to something else and back to what I was doing in the first place instead of sitting there and concentrating on one thing at a time. I suppose I've always been a bit mad really, but it's worked out okay over the years because I can do lots of things. The only formal training I've had is in music, and that was quite useful. But in engineering I just make it up as I go along really. In this clip that you're currently watching, I'm busy turning the thread to the correct length. I do not want it to protrude into the steam chest and file the valve. And now I'm taking a very, very fine cut and finishing off the surface down to the 5 eighths that I need it to be. In the home workshop, not to be confused with industry, if you take a nice fine cut, you're more likely to get a good finish. If you take a heavy cut on a small lathe, it may chatter or it may just leave a lot of grooves in the work. It's all down to speeds and feeds and you learn these by experience. I'm showing this piece of simple turning in real time. Because a lot of comments that I get say, not enough machining in this one. 
So in this one, there's going to be plenty of machining and less painting, you'll be pleased to hear. And then once I've got the piece to the right length, I'm now parting it off with my little parting tool. Here it goes. Just about, yes, it's gone. I've turned the piece round in the chuck now, and I'm holding the work by the turn part, the 5 8 diameter part, not by the thread. This is very, very important. You could hold it by the thread if it was a very light machining operation, but this is more of a heavier machining operation, and we're going to be cutting a thread on this end. And if you hold it by the thread at the other end, it's likely to spin round in the chuck and destroy the thread at the other end. So always hold the part you're working on in the chuck on the most substantial part of the work. I don't think I need to go into great detail about how to cut the thread on this end, as it's almost identical to the way I cut the thread on the other end. This thread is smaller, it's 3 8 by 32 threads per inch, and it's going to take a union nut that allows the use of quarter inch pipe. This clip shows me drilling the end of the fitting for the corned union that will hold this quarter inch pipe. Now you see me using a tailstock die holder which is the accepted method or the one that I use for cutting most threads in the lathe. You can buy these commercially, they're not very expensive, but it's great practice if you're a beginner to make your own set of tailstock die holders, that's what I did. In this clip I'm shortening the thread to the finished length. What I don't want to see is lots of thread after the union nut when the union nut's in place. And now I'm going to screw on a union nut to see what it looks like. And I'm tightening it with the spanner to get it to the finished length. Yeah, that doesn't look bad. What I'm going to do is beyond the union nut towards the fitting, and I'm doing it here, I'm going to turn a bit of the fitting beyond the thread parallel. It just looks better. And in this clip, I'm just using a deburring tool to radius the inlet to the steam chest. Before I get lots of complaints from experts and people telling me how to do it, yes, I do know that the hole is not bang in the centre of the casting. All I did was enlarge the existing hole, and it doesn't matter anyway because when this piece is painted, you won't notice. I silver soldered a union nipple to a piece of copper pipe, and here I'm fitting it to the engine. I haven't cleaned the pipe up because it's only a temporary thing. Normally at this point I'd be getting quite excited, but I'm really not excited with this engine in any shape, way or form. The more I look at it, like a lot of these engines that you see me repair, the worse it gets. This has been made by a raw beginner. Maybe a school, maybe some sort of an apprentice piece. Parts of the engine are reasonably well made and other parts are just an absolute disaster area. The timing is completely out, it's not going to run. With compressed air applied to the inlet, nothing happens. There's plenty of oil in there, it's just blowing straight out of the exhaust port, which means that the valve isn't in place properly, which also means the piston is blowing. We shall see when I dismantle it further. But never mind, it keeps me off the streets. Thanks for watching, I hope you found it useful.